<clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 990. Yes, the countdown, the 10 countdown is here. The last 10 before 1000. Strange math. All right. So the topic today is, do you feel loved? And why being single is the best time to explore this? Yes, I'm going to break that one down. It's going to be very simple, actually, but I'll see if I can stretch it out to 10 minutes and explain more fully. Um, one reason that I'm doing this talk today is because I was aware, I was speaking about this another time, um, I was at Agape, my spiritual center this morning, and I really got the sense about how people come to Agape to be fed. The thing is, the teaching is to actually feed yourself. And like the idea of having, the, when you're on an airplane, where you put your oxygen mask on first before you put that on a child, the same thing is true about, about love as well. So the reason we're saying being single is a good time to do it, I'll explain in a moment. But the thing about it is that love is something that comes from within us. We're thinking we can get it from somebody else. Hi, Lacey, nice to see you in my broadcast. But if you're, if you're in a place where you need to have it from somebody else and don't feel it from yourself, you're living in a place, first of all, that's kind of lacking. Secondly, you're in a place where you're actually in, in a, almost in a role of being a victim, or at least of being a puppet. Because if you're dependent upon somebody else giving you something, whether it's love or anything else, it's their control, or excuse me, it's their actions that control how you feel. So if you are in fact dependent upon your partner to love you and make you feel okay, if they take that away from you, you don't feel okay and you don't feel loved, which means they can manipulate you. And if you've been in relationships like that, you know what I'm talking about. And I have, so I understand. So the recognition is that if you don't take the loving back yourself and take dominion over your own loving, then it becomes a place where you're actually falling into a trap because it means they have control. They, the mysterious they, as in your past relationships. So what I'm attempting to do, communicate in this talk briefly, effectively, is that love really is a self-centric not self-centered, a self-centric practice. And when you learn how to, um, and what should say when you practice how to, because maybe you already know, most of us all do not have, no, but when we practice applying loving to ourselves, rather than looking for it out there as a primary motivation, first of all, it makes you independent, not needing someone else to make you feel whole, of course. It's just a slip, that one. Hmm. Not feeling whole is an illusion anyway, <laughs> because we are already whole, all of us are whole. So when you love yourself first, you remember your wholeness. When you remember to love yourself, it's with memory stuff. But the recognition underneath that is, is that any relationship you go into doesn't require them to make you feel okay. Now, it doesn't mean you can't have somebody love you. No, it's not what I'm talking about here. But what I'm saying is that when they love you, it's additive, it's a bonus, it's, a, it's gravy, so to speak, on the loving you already have inside yourself. So I'm not saying you shouldn't be in a relationship, but I'm saying when you're single, is the best time to practice this because it's when you're in a relationship, it's tempting to not practice because you've got somebody loving you, you know? But then you're in this place where you're actually, um, well, on one level, you're, you're sort of hoping they don't give up loving you. They'll keep loving you forever because they promised they would do that or whatever they said to you when you first fell in love with them. I'm not gonna touch that one. <laughs> that could get very messy. But the understanding is that when we have this promise from somebody, they violate, they break, they don't feel that you are, um, what's we're looking for? You don't feel that they're actually applying, expressing being as loving as they promised at the beginning. You start feeling disappointed or hurt or wounded or judgmental or resentful or any of those different things, those flavors we all feel when we don't get what we think from our partner, when they withhold something. This is why loving ourselves is so vital because first of all, as I said, when you love yourself, you fall more reliant upon yourself. The second part is, when you love yourself in a relationship and your partner withdraws, does something else, you don't get quite as reactive to it because you already have that baseline of love inside yourself. This is one of the biggest keys, by the way, to a healthy, conscious, growing relationship. Because when you have this understanding that loving yourself first makes every relationship better, it changes. The, it's like a game changer. It really is. So when you're single, is the best time to practice love because that's when you get to practice without somebody else's love um, influencing your choice about loving yourself. That's why I keep preaching, and that is, it's Sunday so I'm preaching. When, you pre when I'm preaching about loving yourself first is a requirement for healthy relationships. It's also what I believe is a requirement for healthy self-support. Because it's easier to 
take care of yourself and do good things for yourself when you love yourself. If you're running around judging yourself and blaming yourself or feeling resentful about something that happened in your life, you tend not to be very loving towards yourself. In fact, you tend to be very negative towards yourself. And that's a, that's a very good way of making all relationships suck, especially the one in the mirror. The second part of that is when you're not taking care of yourself because you're judging, blaming, feeling guilty, whatever that is, is you start to take less care of your health and vitality. It all ties together. So loving yourself as an act of, I was going to say an act of, an act of mercy, an act of intention to respect and appreciate who you are. First of all, means you take. It tends to guarantee you take. Well, it tends to imply you take care of yourself better ways, and you tend to do that as a promise because when you love yourself, you make us. You make your awareness of yourself important, so you will take care of yourself. It's not about worthiness or about value. It's about the fact that you care enough to do something about it. It's like when you love yourself, you tend to try and find your diet might improve. When you love yourself, you might decide to go out for more walks or exercise or other things because you love yourself. Not because you have to, because some people, they, they do function that way. But when you love yourself first, your self-care regimen tends to up-level. From the simplest things, maybe you meditate more. Maybe you eat healthier. Maybe you um, take better care of yourself. Because when you love yourself, that tends to be what's on the agenda. You value who you are, so you take care of yourself. Because there are many people I know, maybe it's just me, that would take care of my partner better than took care of myself. I'm the only one who did that, I'm sure. But this is the trap we fall into when we don't love ourselves first. We put the other person as more valuable than ourselves. Again, I don't think it's just me. But the recognition is that when you love yourself first, that partner becomes additive to your experience. And ideally, they do the same thing. So when both partners are loving themselves first, then what happens is they add to the relationship in a much bigger way. As I've said many times, Relationship isn't 50-50, it's 100-100. So if you're fully loving yourself first and your partner's loving themselves first too, when you come together, the love is magnified, is multiplied, it's abundant, so to speak. But it takes the one to start, which is you. Because if you're single, you haven't met the other person yet, probably. So love yourself first is a, is a, a vital piece of my homework assignment to you if you're single. That's why I created my self-love meditation. I will put the link in the comments. You can check it out for yourself. As a practice, a discipline, to love yourself intentionally at least twice a day with conscious meditative practices that will take you through a month's flow because, as I said yesterday in my talk, when you do something for a month, it creates a new habit, a new paradigm, a new experience, and it shifts things completely. So if you take a month to do that, because they say 21, 25, 28 days, something like that is minimum, I say give it a month. That's a good, good time frame to practice this discipline for yourself. However you do it, whether you use my guided meditation or just do it yourself in your own way, practice loving yourself as a conscious intention. And how you do that can be as simple as putting your hand over your heart, it can be as simple as um, saying no to things that don't work for you, maybe saying yes to things that do work for you. So, hi, it's a lazy. So, how do you know, hi Danny, um, how do you know when you fully, really love yourself? Hmm. Well, there is no limit, I would say, so it's not about you fully love yourself. It's more about the fact that you really take care of yourself. And when you, what I mean by that is, is that you notice that your thought process tends to be more positive versus negative. That's a side effect, by the way, of loving yourself. The more you love yourself, let me, let me, okay, I've got two layers came up. <laughs> you started something here, thank you, Lacey. When you love yourself and really care about yourself, First of all, you'll, uh, you'll elevate your thinking because you'll be less attached to what other people think of you. You really get to understand that what other people think of you is none of your business, to quote Eleanor Roosevelt. The second part, though, which is the second thought that came up, is when you love yourself, unresolved things will tend to come up for you to make peace with, which is a gift, or they may feel like a curse. But what happens is when you love yourself, things that don't fit that love may show up, not always, but they may show up to be reviewed. So you say, you know what, that doesn't work for me anymore. I don't, I don't follow that example. I don't choose that anymore. When you love yourself, there's more, um, what's the word looking for? There's more reverence for who you are and what you do. So we're saying that you're, 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 waiting to, you're waiting to date again until you're in a good loving space and doing the right things you're saying, but when do I know I'm in that place? Ah, hmm, interesting question there. So, first of all, thank, you're on the right track. So you are loving yourself first and you're doing that in the right place. 
the best way I can say about it is that when you, first of all, when you really love yourself, you'll be less attached to needing a relationship. That's one of the clues, by the way. Loving yourself first makes you less needy of something outside yourself because you're filling yourself up first. And you notice again how you treat yourself, about how you talk to yourself, how you feel about yourself, and how you act with yourself is all up leveled. It's all, it generally is more positive. Not perfectly positive necessarily, but again, when you're loving yourself first, you're, you're, um, you'll be happy with who you are in some ways. You'll be at peace with who you are. These are all like spokes on the wheel of what love is in the middle. If love is in the middle, the speaking spoke of self of self care, of feeling at peace with yourself, of trusting yourself, of being more self confident. I'm, I'm imagining spokes off a wheel. That's kind of how it works. And so when you really are loving yourself, you notice that other areas of your life start to fit. Now, not everything's going to work perfectly, just to be clear, because parts of life require more physical work, effort, like around finances or career or other things like that. But at least in the relationship with yourself you'll have more care, compassion, and love for yourself going through those experiences. So you won't feel like um, like, you fled your, like you're beating yourself up. When you love yourself, the tempta if, you're, if you're, you're someone who's in the past, and I've done it myself, who I beat myself up in the past for things I didn't do right, or I didn't do the right thing, I'd be cursing at myself. The more I've really worked on loving myself and caring about myself, that doesn't happen as much. If I make a mistake, it's like, I can do better. Let's do better. Versus, oh, you did something wrong, you shouldn't have done that. You know that voice? That self-love um, center that you carry inside yourself tends to remove the, um, how do I put this? The inclination towards self-judgment, self-recrimination, and self-blame. Um, I want to better those words. So to answer your question more specifically, Lacey, um, there's no, there isn't, there's no destination with this. That's the thing I get to. So being in a good loving space or good loving place is something you will move into, but you'll also continue to grow. So you don't sort of arrive there and put your feet up and go, okay, I've arrived, I'm done. It doesn't work that way. But when you do, you'll notice more and more how you are self-honoring your choices. One of the things I talked about in other talks maybe a couple of months ago was about keeping your agreements. And one of the things about keeping agreements is you say no more often. So less agreements to keep. And part of self-love is you make your agreements with much more awareness and presence to say, you know what, that doesn't work for me. And I'll say no to that. And so what I'm saying comes from that place of really having a sense of, um, I was going to say the word authority, but it's more about ownership. ownership. When you're loving yourself and practicing more self-love, you see you have more ownership about your decisions. And ownership in all your relationships, not just romantic, but all relationships, you'll notice yourself being more present with who you are and noticing you won't get pulled by other people's persuasions or impressions or desires. So when somebody family member, co-worker, something else, pulls something from you and wants you to do something, you stand on your own two feet and you go, "Is this?" You, it's almost like you get to choose evaluation versus reactivity. I talked about this um, last week about reactivity versus responsiveness. And this is kind of part of that. When you really are in a place where you are loving yourself, then you, then you notice that the way things happen around you, you respond as you're, at your choosing versus reacting because it happened. You're not triggered as easily. So I hope this gives you some clues. Those are, these are all... Um, indicators of when you know you're in that place of self-love. So again, I'll put a link in the comments for my self-love meditation if you want to practice in a more intentional way and have 30 days of support. That's what my guided self-love meditation will help you with. But however you do it, it is about putting yourself first in your life. And the differentiation I'll make here, one quick one, is that I'm speaking from the point of view of compassionate support of yourself, not egotistical, I'm first screwing everybody else. That's not self-love, that's egotism. Very different thing. So when you really are caring about yourself, thank you, Glacian, I'm glad it makes sense. When you are practicing self-love for yourself, it really is kind of neck down, it's heart-based, it's, it's where you feel, you may think about it, but you'll feel more compassion for yourself, more care, more attention for yourself. That is not ego-driven, but it's much more um, self-driven. If you understand the difference between self and ego, psychologically speaking, they're different. <laughs> so I hope this has been of help to you. And thank you for the questions, by the way, Lacey. I appreciate it. It gives me something to, to chew on and work on. So thank you for that. So if this makes sense, I appreciate you letting me know. And if you have questions, please, again, let me know. Even after I sign up, I'll respond. Um, again, the link will be in the comments for my self-love meditation. It's a two audio and AM and PM meditation with my voice guiding you to open up to love for yourself in a very practical way using a mirror. It's a very, it's a mirror exercise, basically. There's an AM and PM plus a guidebook that shows you they go two different, there's actually a main part and there's a deeper level I'm not going to tell you about. You have to actually get the, get the workbook to find out. 
Um, so your homework, if you choose, is to practice self-love. Your homework, if you are willing to, is to turn up the self-love jets. If you're not loving yourself as much as you want to, do more. If you're really loving yourself, awesome. I was going to say, is there anything else I give you? If you're, love, if you're loving yourself, there's always more, as I said in the response to Mr. Lacey. There is no place to get to destination-wise. It's really about continuing the practice all the, all the time because the world tends to throw things at us that sometimes, sometimes hmm, often knocks us off center. Living in LA, the traffic's one of those. It's like, can I stay loving with myself when someone cuts me off on the freeway? If that's a challenge, apply more loving. <laughs> it's kind of that. Like, if the, you know, if the answer is love, what's the question type thing? When something isn't working, can you apply more loving? So that's your homework assignment if you choose. If you choose. I'm not forcing it on you. Um, that's about it for today. I think that covers my thoughts for today. Um, I do appreciate you being with me, as always. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do every day, seven days a week, on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Um, this is this is episode number 990, so I've got 10 more to the 1,000, which will be in 10 days. I'm not sure what I'm going to do after 1,000. I might be doing 1,001, or I might push it off for a bit, just so you know, I might be taking a break. Having done 1,000 in a row, oops, excuse me, bang, bang the camera. Um, you're welcome, Lacey. I'm glad I could help. Um, if you want more support, let me know, of course. So 10 more to go before I get 1,000. After that, I'm not sure where I'm going to, how I'm going to do them. If I do it daily, weekly, or do my private group, I'm not sure. But my goal is to go straight through to 1,000, and then decide. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, again, personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, seven days a week at 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you want to watch the replays, they're on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page. On there are, well, all my broadcasts are saved there, but Facebook doesn't show them all. So there's a few hundred out there, but not many more. You can see if you're scrolling through. However, I have a backup plan, literally. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash barryselby, please subscribe. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine where every single one of them is backed up. So you can watch from the newest to oldest. This one will be up there as soon as I sign off or within an hour or so. And you can watch anyone you want, scan through by titles, um, keywords, and find the ones that will help you get where you want to go. So if you want to help directly, you can message me over social media. If you want to get the self-love meditation, the link will be in the comments after I sign off. And my intention is always to support and serve and inspire you to love yourself more in all areas of life. And so, as always, I appreciate you and thank you for watching. And please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.